This is JV from Truth Be Told, man. So it's an honor to have you here. You know, we I reached out. We talked in the DM. We made it happen quick, man. I really appreciate it. So, you know, I just want to kick it off. You know, let the people know, you know, your name and, and, and where you from. You know, I'm originally doing the boy John the Boo, man, from the Magnolia Project. I really grew up in the bed of my coat, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, I'm Magnolia me, man. I've been all over the project, you hear me? Okay. So, you know, that's just what it is. Okay, so tell me, tell me what it's like, what it was like growing up as a as a as a little kid in in, in Magnolia. Well, growing up in the Magnolia, man, it was cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, my mama was originally from the Cali Project. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Dirge and Walk Coe. You know what I'm saying? But uh, you know, as I was young, like four years old, she called a life sentence. You know, for dealing heroin and stuff. You know, and uh. After that, you know, that when I went to the know you, you know what I'm saying? Went to the know you. And uh, my stepmom with Dolores, everybody should know you, you know what I'm saying? She uh, served a click on the two for three lady, you hear me? And uh, bailed my coat. But, uh, so, you, so your mom still locked up right now? Nah, my mom actually came home. Oh, right, okay. When I was uh, incarcerated, really. Like 2010, I called my time in 2009. She actually came on from a life sentence in 2010. You know what I'm saying? The law in uh, Louisiana changed. She was uh, out in St. Gabriel, Louisiana. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, oh, okay. So, like, growing up, did you... So, when you moved from, from the Cali to the Magnolia, did you know, you, you said you was with your stepmom? Right. So, did you have, like, your, your dad was around? Or, like, was was you... What was your household like growing up? Like, stepmom and dad around or just stepmom? You know, it always was stepmom, you know what I'm saying? I ain't had no father, bro. You know, my father was uh, deceased, you know what I'm saying? So I never really had a chance to meet him or know what he was about. But I done heard stories about him, you know what I'm saying? And he was out the Magnolia Project, you know what I'm saying? But uh, okay. you know, I really don't know too much about him, but the story that older he done told me about him that was from the project, uh, from out the Cali U Project, or just people that just know him in general, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, like, growing up, you know, I seen a couple interviews with some artists from the Magnolia. You know, I seen, like, a Turk. I seen Juvenile. And they said growing up, you know, they seen, all they, all they seen was just like murder, 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 murder. Like, when you was growing up as a younger, you know, as a younger kid, was that something that was around at the time? Like, did you see, like, did you, did you have to witness a lot of crime to that extent? I mean, I witnessed a lot of crime, you know what I'm saying, in a project, man. You know, I witnessed the thing from looking out the window, and I witnessed the thing from sitting on the porch, you know what I'm saying? Like the older he, like Mosquito, you know what I'm saying, uh, Eric Maurice, you know, all them type of guys, you know what I'm saying? You to be like, Johnny Boo, go inside. Go your little bad, you know, inside. And, you know, at being young, in a project, we all knew what that mean, you know what I'm saying? Go inside. You know what I'm saying? I don't ask questions, you know. I just do what they do, you hear me? So me being a, a, a nosy youngster in a project, you know, I always looked out the window and I actually saw what they were doing. So, you know, when you young like that and witnessing things like that, you take a liking in the thing like that because that's all you be around, you know what I'm saying? Right. That's that was, all you see. Right. You know, so that was gunshot like, rang out, you know, somebody laying on the ground, you want to go see who it is. That was my next question. So it, it didn't. So when you would see, you would witness these things. It didn't turn you away from it. It just made you more like intrigued as far as like what they had going on. Right. You know what I'm saying? As right. as a younger dude, because some, some people it could be like if I was you know me personally or something. Man, being I'm not like no street dude or nothing. If I see some activity like that outside, I'm I'm probably you know what I'm saying hey, that's not me. Right. But right. it made you more intrigued with you know with the streets basically. I'm going to say, like, you know, when you witness a thing like that, you know what I'm saying, and these dudes' name ringing, you know, ringing the bell throughout the city and the project, you know what I'm saying, you you take a liking in the stuff like that, you know what I'm saying, so you want to be them guys because, you know, you young and you looking up to them and, you know, they got all the fame, you know, they got all the women, they got all the money because, you know, they hustling, you feel me, so, you know. You just looked up to guys like that, man, and you already respect them. So once you got old enough to be their age or closer to their age, you know, you start doing things that they were doing because that's all you see. Right, and you named some Eric Maurice. You know, he was 
he was name dropped in a, in a Magnolia Slim song. He had yeah. that. He had that. Uh, that that bar. What do you say? Uh, I seen. I seen Eric Maurice. See, everyone dressed out as a clown. Dressed dress like a clown. Yeah, know? yeah. So, so I'm looking at it work. So that's how I would. Mm-hmm. Know what I'm saying, sitting on a project porch. You know what I'm saying? You know these type of guys do stuff. You can't help nothing but to see. You know what I'm saying? Then the open way in the project. Right. These ain't number cold way. They ain't like the streets right there. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So it was easy for the do stuff. And kind of get away with it a little bit because when you from the project and you know everybody, everybody know you, they know your family, your mama, all that. Ain't nobody going to tell on you. You know, it is. It is what it is. I saw you and I didn't say you. But some of the old heads that'll see you, you know what I'm saying, doing dirt, they'll pull you aside and be like, you know, I saw what you did. You know, and you just laugh it off and be like, all right, mom, all right. I ain't old school, you know, it just was like that, you heard? Right, and, and what part of the project, so can you break down the projects to me? Because I hear, uh, you know, I hear Wild Willow, right. Six Court, I hear uh, just different parts of the of the, of the Magno you got. The old, the old side, new side, what part did you grow up in? I grew up on the new side of the Magno, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, Bell my coat, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? We could sit up, rap a Sam, you know what I'm saying? You could be with No Limit. And still doing the thing right now, you know what I'm saying? I stayed across the coat from Sam. I used to be by the house every day. Matter of fact, me and his little cousin, little Nathan, you know what I'm saying? We'd uh, sit on the pool, play Ninja Turtle toy, wrestling toy. You know, we'd be in the house playing the uh, Nintendo, the regular Nintendo. You know, I had to sleep over there every weekend, you know. We'd go to the same school, Tom LaFond, which was uh, based off in the middle of the Magnolia Project, you know what I'm saying? It, like one of the only projects. They had a middle school actually in the middle of it. So, you know, we all went to the elementary school, you know what I'm saying? So So like so you mentioned some names before. Uh so who when you when, you know, growing up as a younger in the younger days, who are some, some names that were ringing bells in, in your projects? Like that you that you always heard or you seen and that you you know, you looked up to? I mean, you had gangster, you had Sterling, you had Mosquito. You had Eric Maurice, you had Lay Lay, you had Funky Fool, you know what I'm saying? You had Frank Mignol, you feel me? You had a lot of other old heads that was, you know, name was ringing for doing that thing, representing the Magnolia, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's who, you know, guy that we always looked it up to, you know what I'm saying, by growing up in the project. You had uh, Brian, you know, you used to call him Biggity back then, you know what I'm saying? You know, that was Lay Lay, brother, you hear me? Lay Lay. So, you know, we always looked it up to those guys that had the big names, you know, like I said before, you know, we always wanted to be like them, you know what I'm saying? Because, uh, like I said, the daily activity you see by being a, a, a youngin', you know, that's all you see, so you want to just be an image of them. Right. So, like, wanting to be an image of them, so at, at what age would you say... You you jumped off the porch. It was no more looking out the window. You kind of like just in the mix. At what age would you say? I'm going to say probably about 12 or 13, you know what I'm saying, that I can remember, you know what right. I'm saying? Like, my stepmama, Dolores, man, she always was hard on me, you know, and uh, she used to always bring me, my sister, and all that to go uh, take the ride to St. Gabriel, go see my mama like every other weekend, so... You know, my mama raised us from the penitentiary, actually. But, you know, like I said, she used to always bring us every weekend, every other weekend, to go take the ride to Gonzales, Louisiana, to go see my mama. You know, and uh, like I said, about 12 or 13, you know what I'm saying, my first uh, gun that I actually had touched and shot was a 25, you know what I'm saying? God bless the dead, my brother Bo Hickey. You know, he was well known in the project, got some hands, you know what I'm saying? You know, people scared to fight him, you know what I'm saying? He kind of was the high head, you know what I'm saying? But, uh... Okay. So you said... So you, you got your first gun at 20... Uh, your first gun at 12 in the projects. Right, I shot it during New Year's, you know what I'm oh, saying? Okay. Like, you just got a gun shooting at yeah. New Year's Eve, you know, everybody. It was just like that, you know right. what I'm saying? So at what point, you know, at 12 years old, you off the porch now... At what point does does this the Dooney boy the Dooney boys form? Well, the Dooney boy formed probably like nineteen ninety nine. You know what I'm saying? We had a a show ex- expand uh, 
99 to 2000, you heard me? So, you know. So, like, at what age would you say, well, take take me back, take me back to how, how the Dooney Boys started. Like, what, you know, how how it started and, you know, how, how y'all was, I guess you can say, like, recruited to be in the Dooney Boys. How, like, how, take me all the way back. I mean, when Dooney Boys started, man, you know what I'm saying? And your relationship with Dooney. Let's start with that. Let's start there. Let's start with your relationship. What was your relationship with Dooney? Well, my relationship with Dooney was like a father figure to me. You know what I'm saying? Because, uh, like, uh, he actually dated my cousin, Keisha Blake. You know what I'm saying? She out the Magnolia. You feel me? She stayed in the Clara Coop, man. She got his only child, man. That's a daughter. But, uh... You know, I've been around doing it, man, since I was like six, seven years old, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, dude used to cook for her. Pop, pop, come on through. Season all on there. You know what I'm saying? He loved the donuts, so, you know, every morning or every other morning, he come to the house with donuts and stuff, you know. So our relationship always was tight, you know what I'm saying? Because the thing that I know now, I inherited that from doing it, you know what I'm saying? And, um... Uh, by being around him, he had a lot of more other friends that was around that were from the 17, well, Pigeon Town, Girt Town, you know what I'm saying? Oh, so he's not even, he's not originally from Magnolia. Nah, doing that ain't never, uh, he ain't originally from the Magnolia, but, you know, it all be the 317 thing, you know what I'm saying, with us, you know what I'm saying, just with the Magnolia and the 17, well, all we were, like, combined at one, you feel me? So, you know, yeah, I've been around doing it since I was, like, six, seven years old. Okay, so what 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 happened as far as you know the start of the Dooney Boys? What started the Dooney Boys? Well, we started the Dooney Boys. I'm gonna say '99 with Dooney first came home. You know what I'm saying? I used to talk to him while he was in the pen, and you know he used to call just to check up on me. And all we were talking about, man, I'm highlights when I come home, bro. I got a plan. You know, and me being young, I probably was about. I'm going to say about 15, 14, 15 at the time, you know what I'm saying? So, all we were like, man, man, what black talking about, you know what I'm saying? But when he actually got out and he, he, he uh, son, his girlfriend that was at the time was Octavia, she out in Magnolia. You know, she like, doing it, won't you around there on Magnolia Street, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, he was around there by my cousin, Keisha Blackout. He was just coming home this first day, you know what I'm saying? So, I go around there and I holler at him and stuff. He like telling me what he got going on and what he won't do. You feel me? And he like, man, I need a lot of young guy. Which young guy that you know that you run with that you trust? And I'm like, man, there's a lot of them. You know what I'm saying? That I just run with just in the mix of. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he like, all right, all right, that was up. Well, uh, I got this here going on. You know what I'm saying? So did what I want to do. And he was telling me the plan. You heard me? You know. Okay, so what, like, what was his plan? I, I didn't know he, had, you know, it was like a plan involved. So his, what was like necessarily his plan with the Dooney Boys? Well, you know, when you got a plan, man, you know, a plan always something that you sit down and thought about, that you done made, you know what I'm saying, come together and stuff. So his plan was to take a few young guys, you know what I'm saying, that ain't just really had too much in the hood. That, you know, we out the hood, man, we struggle, you know what I'm saying? Some of us come from broken background, you know what I'm saying? So... Just I had too much, you feel me? So, you know, we took a few of us, took us up under that wing, bro. You know oh. what I'm saying? They gave up the game, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so like when he when he took you out under his wing, when it first started out, like what were some things that not necessarily he had y'all doing, but y'all was just doing being as Dooney Boys. And was it original name the Dooney Boys or was it Nah, we were just some young nigga that was just hanging around at first, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we actually got the name Dooney Boy from the Magnolia Hood. You know what I'm saying? Everybody knew the Magnolia Hood. Consider uh, uh, Queevy. I'm going to see. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of them. You know, YY from out of the project. You know what I'm saying? Kiki. You know, it was a lot of Magnolia girls. You just hang around while we were doing our thing, and they just started calling us Dooney Boy. And then next thing you know, doing the boy for the short time went to saying DB. You know what I'm saying? DB was short time for doing the boy instead of just saying doing the boy. The, the, the uh, DB. And that's how, you know, we got our name from the Magnolia Hood. Okay, so starting out as, you know, the, the Dooney Boys is just starting. 
Well, we'll like, we'll be like it. Yeah, we lookouts on the corner, that type of situation. Right, right, right. right. You know, we started off at bus boys. You know what I'm saying? We watch the bus, let them know, you know, the law coming this way, they coming that way. If it's straight, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like Jew, you just see. You know what I'm saying? You're going to start off, you're going to watch the bus. So that's how we would. And then, you know, we always had the same the way you graduate. You know, somewhere graduate, you know what I'm saying? From watching the bus to catching the hallway. So when we called the hallway, then we knew that it was up to the next level. You feel what I'm saying? Okay, so how many, like, how many levels, you know, are there for you to, like, just keep going up as a as a Dooney boy? It's just like, you know. I mean, it actually was based off your characteristics. Uh, you had to entreat it yourself to where doing it. But see, you know what I'm saying? Well, I feel like you should move up. I feel like, you know what I'm saying? It's your turn next. Go ahead and I'll catch that all we here. You know what I'm saying? Do what you do. So, as you were learning and, and doing different things, then, like I said, you just move up to a different position. But, you know, up being in a project, man, we just saying we knew better. But we ain't just no better, you know what I'm saying? We just looking at the money, man. We some young broke guys, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. So, you know, family struggling to get this for us and get that in. So that was our way out, you know what I'm saying? To doing other things like, I'm tired of my sister buying this. I'm tired of my mama buying this. I'm tired of asking my brother for this. And they do it on their own time. So, you know, when you want, you know, be a grown man, you know, you take initiative in yourself. To do things to make money on your own, so and I ain't gotta ask mama for the do do this. I ain't gotta ask my sister to do this. I ain't gotta ask my brother, you know, man, hey man, uh, buy me these shoes for school, and he taking weeks and months and stuff to do it. Now I got the money to do it myself. I go to Foot Locker when I want. I could go to At Lee Feet when I want. You know what I'm saying I go to Sag Fifth Avenue when I want. Nah, so. for sure. So, and the Dooney Boys, like who who are. Some other noticeable members of the Dooney Boys that, you know, name will ring bells. I mean, you had Shorty Mike, you had Timmy, you had B Stupid, you know what I'm saying? You had uh, Le Cab, he was out the 17 walk, you know what I'm saying? You know, you had uh, Le Calvin, you had Le 411, which was Le Tree, you know what I'm saying? You had Dooney Boy Rob, you had B, I mean, you had uh, Beatty. You had uh, Kenny Boo, you know what I'm saying? So how how'd you get the name Johnny Boo? Who gave you that name? How did you know? How did that come about? I mean, that name Johnny Boo came from my uncle. You know what I'm saying? He got killed a long time ago in the Cali. You was I ain't never met him. It was way before my time. You hear me? So one day it happened with him, and I was born coming about. They said, man, him kind of favor like so. They just gave me that name. You know, that's my nickname, Johnny Boo, you heard me? Okay, yeah. So, you mentioned some names in the Dooney Boys. You mentioned, uh, you know, Be Stupid. Right. You know, uh, the internet, you know, they, 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 you know, they love to post all these stories about Be Stupid. You know, videos, you know, his sister, I, you know, I want to shout out his sister, Deshaun. She reached out to me. We spoke. Right, right. Um, right. You know, what, what can you tell me about Be Stupid and your relationship? Man, man, be stupid always with tight, you know what I'm saying? He always was a high head, but he always listened to me, you know what I'm saying? I can speak for me, man, me. You know, when I ask him to do something, I tell him something, you know, he always do it, you know what I'm saying? Like, the young he always was a high head, though, you know what I'm saying? Like, he wasn't getting it. Like, that one of the DB that, you know, that just wasn't getting it, you know what I'm saying? That you just had to respect his mind, you know, he gonna make you feel that just what it is, you know what I'm saying? I had a bit in the ad question later, you know, that be stupid. You know, when you uh, speak on that name and you hear it, then you wonder, like, did the do had to be stupid? You know what I'm saying? So, it's just what it is, what it was with him, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. So, what about, um, you know, you got Shorty Mike. Shorty Mike. And, you know, you got the uh, the bar from Soldier Slim, Magnolia Slim, you know. He got that that bar, you know. Shorty Mike just got killed. Right, right, right. So, what was your relationship with uh, with Shorty Mike? Me and Shorty Mike were cool, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Shorty Mike actually was from out the Iberville project. You know what I'm saying? Uh, his mama and stuff moved back there in the Magnolia. So, uh, 
when he moved back down to Magnolia with his mama, you know, him and Dona had kind of collided a little bit, you know, build a relationship, you know what I'm saying? And Black came in the project one day and was like, man, I want y'all to meet my little, you know, my little nigga. And then that's how we all met so, uh, uh, saw the mic, you hear me? That's how I saw the mic come about, Dona had, you know, uh, presenting him to us, you know. And like, even though he was from another project, we still took him in like family, you know what I'm saying? And where you were from, you know, where you was at with us, you know what I'm saying? So that's how, you know, we get the thing with Shaw the mic, you know what I'm saying? But man, his relationship was all right. You know, we had a few run in, but you know, some of us always gonna have that, you know what I'm saying? Little fight, little arguments and all that, but it was all we love, you know what I'm saying? With all of us. Okay, for sure. And then you have uh, another person, you know, people ask about is uh, Timmy. No, oh, man, Timmy. Timmy, man, man, Timmy go way back, like, hopscotch, you know what I'm saying? Like, when this beat gone, Timmy, bro. Yeah, that's like your day one. Yeah, you know, that was like my best friend, you know what I'm saying? Just when my day one, that was my best friend, you know what I'm saying? Timmy Carew, you know what I'm saying? You no, know, man, Timmy went through a lot of things together, bro, you know what I'm saying? We went to elementary together. We used to play in the cold yard together on the, uh, on the uh, dirt pile, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> They used to call us dirt divers and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? He always was wild too. You know, a little high here, you just couldn't really tell him nothing, you know what I'm saying? But uh yeah man, tell me relationship with I, right, man, you know what I'm saying? We come up together, man. Like I said, elementary. You know, we done did a lot of things together, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna speak on, but you know, we done did a lot of things together, you know. Uh actually the day that Timmy got killed. Uh, I was at his mom out with him because he already suffered a gunshot wound in the back of his thigh. And uh, that same day I was at his mom out and I was telling him, bro, listen, bro, you want crutches, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we beefing, you feel me? So you don't need to come in the project, period. Lay low, man, you know what I'm saying? Get well. Because if you come in the project, bro, and we beefing like we is, Somebody swing, bro. Everybody gonna be asking, trying to protect and think about themselves. See what I'm saying? And uh, he was like, you know what, Johnny Boo, bro? I ain't gonna come back there. And I'm like, all right. So during that time, I jumped in the cab and went back in the project. Just during the time, like, the project was, everybody was moving out. They were forcing everybody to move out to Magnolia at the time. You know what I'm saying? So six co probably had probably about a few people. And I ain't gonna see a handful. It wasn't even but 10 people living in six at the time because everybody was moving. That when they were uh, making them move downtown, St. Bernard Project. Well, we wanted to pick it because they were on the verge of demolishing the project, you hear me? So, uh, so we like, you know what, Johnny Boo, you right, man. I ain't gonna uh, come back there, but you know, one thing turned to another, you know what I'm saying? Like, when I did call the cab and went back in the project and landed on 6th Street, you hear me? Uh, Little 411 come on, cause he was in like the little juvenile detention jail. So when 411 came on, it was me, stupid, dizzy, warrior, you know, a few of us, uh, little Rob, you know, it was a few of us in the co we at the time, cause it was 2001, you hear me? You know, uh, not to mention that, you know, man, Timmy Carew, sister had a daughter together. You know what I'm saying? So we were real close, like I said, we were real close. So we had a daughter together. She was born 2001, August 14, you know what I'm saying? And uh, she was born at the time, so it was like August she was born. So I'm going to say Timmy got killed September, October, I'm going to say around November or something, if I ain't mistaken the date, you know what I'm saying? I just don't actually, you know what? It was uh, around 9-11 time. That was November, I remember. So, uh... You know, like I said, Timmy was a high head, you know, he ain't like to listen, bro, you know how we were young. All of us ain't gonna listen to something somebody tell us, bro, so I told him no, come and he came anyway. So when 411, uh, when we go around there on 6, I get out the cab, go meet up with the other, uh, uh doing the boy, brother, you know what I'm saying, uh, 411 come on, he come walking up 6, we got a bush on the head, so we like, man, about to bring you it, um, Man, we about to bring you on uh, the air to go up there and get your uh, haircut by Vanessa shop. Vanessa, she wanted the hairdressers out to make, you know what I'm saying? But she was in the shop 
that was on Louisiana, me and Washington Avenue. But uh, they had people in there cutting hair and stuff, so we bought them around there get a haircut. So as we sitting in the barbershop getting a haircut, the phone rang up in the barbershop. We like, man, somebody just got shot up around there on C. Like, on C, we just come over for C. Now somebody got shot up out there, ain't nobody without them. So, you know, and, uh, we get the word, you know what I'm saying? We go around there, see what it is. It tempting. You know what I'm saying? So, that kind of like messed with me a little because I just told him, you know, to stay home. And uh, he told me he was. So, you know, that kind of touched me a little bit. And he came anyway. And, uh, you know, that that what happened to him. You know what I'm saying? He got killed that very day. So y'all, so y'all got the phone call while y'all was at the barbershop, but y'all yeah, just left. How, like how how long? Man, it probably wouldn't even like fifteen minutes, bro. No later than ten, fifteen minutes. We made it to the barbershop. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so do you think like if y'all wouldn't have went to the barbershop, it could have prevented what happens on? Because you know all y'all would have been out there. I mean, all that would have been out there, bro. You know, and. Never knew how that situation could have turned out even worse. Uh, who say that we could have got him up off him? You know what I'm saying? I feel like we could have got him up off him, but uh, you know, thing happened, man. You know what I'm saying? When you're in the game, you got to accept certain things that come with it. You know what I'm saying? So once we made our mind up to jump off the porch and actually do this and do that, we already accept the consequences that come with it. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, you live by it, you die by it, you know what I'm saying? But uh, like I said, Timmy was one of my best friends, man. You know, we did everything together, bro. You no know, smoke went out, you know what I'm saying? We did everything together, bro. So, now, answer this, if you know what I'm saying, to the best of your ability, if not at all. So, are you, are, so, is a, there was a, a rapper from out the Calio. Went by the name of Double G. Yeah, Double G. He all right. So you're familiar with the right, right. Okay, so he had a, he had a song where you know he's pretty much talking. To, you know he's pretty much talking about a lot of. I heard that song. You heard the song. I so, wasn't uh, too happy with it though. You know what I'm saying because uh, like I said, something brand to be spoken on. You know what I'm saying, and when you make song like that, and you talking about everything from front to back. You know what I'm saying. You know how that turned out, man. You know how a person look at you, man. Especially when they feel like you actually got fakes. You know what I'm saying? They, they like snitching. You know what I'm saying? You using your music to tell. So I ain't, I wasn't, I heard of that song while I was in the penitentiary. Matter of fact, my little partner Kevin had called me and told me, man, check out this song. He sent me the link to it. And I'm laying on my rack. I go look, and you know, he, and I'm listening to it. I'm like, man, man. We're talking about everything, you know what I'm saying? So how you feel like when you heard him pretty much like, because he, he, he name dropped Lil Timmy, he name dropped a lot of a lot of people you came up with. Like, how did you how did you feel about that? Like I said, I wasn't too happy about it, bro, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, certain things ain't to be told, you know what I'm saying? Ain't to be heard of. You know, if I, if I know something happened, bro, I ain't going to speak on it, you know what I'm saying? Because you never know the outcome of that, you know what I'm saying? Like, New Orleans over here, uh, a thing to where, you know, snitches get left in the ditches. So, you know, sometimes, bro, you just kept to yourself, man. The best kept secret, you know what I'm saying? Sure. You know, so a lot of stuff, bro, keep it to yourself. It ain't for you to go tell because you could go trust somebody. You feel like you trust somebody, you could go tell them what happened. You don't know what they gonna do with what you told them. They might go go tell the other person. And then that's how stuff gets started, leak around the whole city. So, you know, something, bro, not to be told, you feel me? Right, so... It's just the cold of the city. It's mm, cold of the streets. Right. To be honest, but, uh... But, you know, I listened to the song, you know. It was, it, it was like... I'm from the East Coast, so 50 Cent got a song called The Ghetto Quran. It kind of reminded me of that. The mm -hmm. old 50 that came out probably like 99. But anyways, uh... So, you know, Magnolia Slim, he had, he had, that, he had that bar about Shorty Mike. Like, where were you... When you got the, ner the the news of you know Shorty Mike getting killed, I mean I was actually in the project, you know what I'm saying? When that happened, man, you know what I'm saying? Like that's another topic that really just ain't to be discussed. But you know I would I would do. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, okay, cool, okay. Yeah. So, you know, you smoke, you know, be stupid, shorty Mike, Timmy, you know, Dooney boys. Now, now it's the year two thousand. You know, Dooney, Dooney gets killed. What, what happens as far as that situation? And like, where were you when you heard that news? I mean, where I was when Dooney got killed, man. I had a baby mama that was uh, pregnant with my with another daughter of mine at the time, man. When uh, Dooney got killed, I was on. I was in the bed of my cool, actually by Cheryl House. Everybody knew Cheryl she, from out of the project, you know what I'm saying? She knew all that thing or whatever, you feel me? But uh, I was over there with my baby mama at the time. I slept over there that night. But uh, that morning when I woke up, I was getting up, putting my shoes on, getting ready to go on the block and sit to go, you know, do my thing, you hear me? You know, grab my bundle, go do what I do, and uh, while I'm putting on my shoe to knock at the door, I told my baby mama, man, uh, go get the door. So when she opened the door, it was uh, doing it by Tona, you hear me? Tona was crying. And I'm like, man, what's up? I heard some shots, sound like they coming from around there by y'all, bro, what's up? Tona, like, uh, You know, it all we hear me when I get right here, bro. You know, uh, Tony was like, man, that doing it right there. You know what I'm saying? He, he, nigga come out the other hallway, bro, and, uh, and he black. So I'm like, for real? So I grab my thing. You know, I'm always scrap. I grab my thing, go around there with the police, you know, around there and all. So I go around there, but he on the second floor. Uh, Vanessa, uh, hallway. You know, she to do help, like I said earlier, and, uh, but, uh, you know, he was laying across, you know, the top porch on the second floor, and so I go up down there, down by, I'm like, man, what's up? He just really ain't talking because he hit him inside, so I'm like, all right, all right, but he told me, he like, uh, get the money out of my pocket, yeah, probably like $1,500 in their pocket, so I got the money out of their pocket, and, uh, you know, Dooney, you the love stalkers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You the love pack of stalkers. Every time you see him, he come on the block or mess with us or come get some bread or something or just any night. You always got a pack of stalkers. So when I go in the pocket and get the $1,500, you got a half a pack of stalkers in their pocket. You know what I'm saying? So, man, it took me about three, four years to eat them stalkers. That same pack. I had held them for years. But uh, I got the money out of their pocket and stuff like that. So when uh, the ambulance arrived and uh, the police, you know what I'm saying, saw and them for sick district and stuff, they put him in the back of the ambulance, you hear me? I mean, remind me, Black, doing it, walk down the stairs on his own, you hear me? So when he got in the ambulance, you know, you looking at a man shot and he walking on his own, you like, yeah, he all right. Once you got to turn to bleed, man, and uh, you bleeding in the inside, you really ain't supposed to move, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody pulled to move you. The ambulance pulled to grab you and put you on that stretcher, you gone to the ambulance. So by him moving, that bullet kind of moved around a little bit. And, uh, you know, uh, a couple of days before that, we sitting on the block, and uh, somebody was trying to sell a vest. And uh, like, man, black man, you need to buy that vest. Like, like, man, I don't need no vest, man. You need to take a headshot. So, you know, to me, I always thought about, you know, if black would have got that vest, by him getting shot in the side, probably could have saved his life. But, you know, things just turned out one way to another. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so, the, so the person, so was the person ever caught as far as, you know, by the authorities who... You know, committed the crime. As far as as far as Dooney go, I mean that you had never knew. You know what I'm saying? I mean you had never knew that until this day. You know what I'm saying? You still don't know. Spectate. Oh, you know what I'm saying? But you actually never know. You know what I'm saying? Your speculation could be wrong sometimes. You hear me? But at the time, speculation was kind of on point. You know what I'm saying? But so, like, 
Do you think it came from like some some hating or just? Oh, it's most definitely hating. You know what I'm saying? Because when you look at it, like you from Atlanta, right? I'm from the Magnolia. I grew up there. You heard me? But you come from Atlanta with a plan. And you got these dudes that in the project that been round up for years. They ain't trying to give up nothing, show up nothing. No type of hustle experience. No, they just, you know, so you come from where you come from and put us on. Now we doing our with man. So I feel like a lot of hatred came from that because he wasn't actually from the Magnolia. Even though he was the original high boy, but a lot of hate came from that. But why hate when well, y'all could have did the same thing that this man did? You know what I'm saying? So you feel like, okay, yeah, that's gone. You can leave it at that. Okay, so you know, rest in peace, Dooney. So, um, so so he gets killed. What happens? Because you know, the Dooney boy started in, what ninety nine. Right. He gets killed in two thousand. Right. So is the Dooney boy still a thing after he passed, or, or yeah, does it just go up like I just rap it even harder now? I mean, Dooney boy actually blew up, blew up when Dooney paid because. He was so highly and respected throughout the city, you know what I'm saying, that everybody looked it up to him, you know what I'm saying, so when they looked it up to him and they see that the young and still holding it down a little bit, you feel me, so he just blew up like that, you know what I'm saying, they just know, man, that them little boy don't have it out there, you know, that the DB, you know what I'm saying, so we actually blew up and we just kept it going, you know what I'm saying, we ain't never let the name die down. Just put it like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got his name tatted right here. You know what I'm saying? Like, the day he got killed, the next day, I got the tattoo. Talking about the next day. When no other doing it, boy, I got his name on. I went and got it. Because, like I said, doing it been around me since I was six, seven years old. You know what I'm saying? Told me everything that I know. You know what I'm saying? But, uh... Yeah, you know, we most definitely kept it going, you know what I'm saying? And uh, that's how, you know, by us being a young man and we trying to find our stuff like who did this, who did that name, we trying to hold somebody accountable for it. Like, you know, we hurt, we young. You know, that like our mentor, so we like, hey, somebody got to get it. Nah, for sure. So, like, after, after Dooney passed, is there, like, anyone else y'all looked up to or were y'all already... Just grown enough to be on your own at the time, or did y'all have like another person, like another mentor, step in? I mean, we had other mentors that stepped in, but you know what I'm saying? Like, that topic ain't even much to be, you know, too much discussed neither. But for the viewers that actually know us, that been around us and seen us, they know what it is, you know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, we actually had more mentors because they were doing it, but he had surrounded the guy that was around him that was doing thing too, you know what I'm saying? So they kind of picked up the pace and kept us going, you know what I'm saying? We looked up to them, made a lawyer to them, you know what I'm saying? Right. So one of us was, was one of those people, um, I hear Ski Wu had, was, was real close with Dooney. Was that one one of the people that stepped in and, and kind of took you out under his wing? Well, when the, when Dooney got killed Ski Wu, he wasn't in prison, he wasn't incarcerated. You know what I'm saying? So he didn't, uh, had time to uh, come to the funeral or none of that because he was incarcerated, you know what I'm saying? But they had other guys that played the role as the same kind of role doing the play that was around, you know what I'm saying? And uh, that's how we were able to keep it going, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so then, you know, so what, what, what's your relationship with uh, Magnolia Slim? Is that someone you looked up to in the project? Soldier, man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they, t- they told me I can't say soldier. They say it's Magnolia Slim. Well, you know, it was Magnolia Slim before it was Soldier Slim, right. you know what I'm saying? But that's a name that he left behind, so it's Magnolia Soldier Slim. When you say Soldier Slim, you're speaking of Magnolia Slim. You know what I'm saying? It ain't make no difference with me. Because I always looked at that man, Magnolia Slim. But he changed his name to Soldier, you know what I'm saying? So it was, it was colliding in one, Magnolia Soldier Slim, you heard me? But, you know, my relation with Slim, man, it was good, man. You know what I'm saying? I can't recall nothing bad about dude, man. You know, it used to be time that Slim used to come get me just by myself. You hear me? We ride in the lay truck, smoke dodo together, you know what I'm saying? Just talking, you know, reminiscing. You 
know, actually, you know, I got a story about, you know, man, soldier, man, at the time, uh, it was uh, a year later, a few months after, uh, album release dropping, you heard me? So we gave a uh, album release party, and I, I want to say it was duplex right there off of L-Hall in the 17 wall, and, uh... Well, uh, which album is this? Uh, year later, a few months after. Oh, that, oh okay, okay. A year later, a few months after, so, uh... We was up in there, you know, he performing on the stage, and, you know, he got a DB around him. He got a few more other people around him that he met with, you know. And, uh, like two, three shots went up in the club. So, you know, at the time, you know, we trying to get him down because we don't know who's shooting. We don't want him to get hit if he the talk. So, you know, we got him in the crowd, get him down, and and we getting him down. His Rolex come off at home. Bam, Sam. Sam know that story, you heard me? So, you know, I'm looking at the camera at this time. And, and, you know, I'm talking to you, Sam. You know the story, you heard me? So, uh, his Rolex came off at home, you heard me? And so when his Rolex came off at home, my eye caught it. I was the only one I had caught his Rolex come off at home. So when they hit the ground of the stage, I picked it up. My head man, so, uh, Highly intention with stuff was going on right then. I didn't see nothing. Even after the club, I didn't see nothing. I grabbed a Rolex off the ground, off the stage. I put it in my pocket. I said, I'm about to fuck with this nigga here a few days. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to tell him nothing. So, you know, uh, I let like a week and a half go by. And uh, I hit his next telephone up. Because I had a little no kill phone. I was paying minutes at the time, you know. They way for social media, you know what I'm saying? So... We had green and black screen, you feel me? You play the snake game on there. So, you know, uh, I hit him up like, whoa, what was down with it, bro? Where you at? He like, bitch, I'm on Magnolia, you understand what I'm saying? I'm like, man, I got something for you. He like, man, don't be calling me around that man from the bull job and shit like that. There. I'm like, man, nah, nah, man, I got something for you, bro. Come out there, man, on everything, bro. Come, come out there. He like, all right, bitch, I'm about to come. So when soldier come, you know what I'm saying? I'm standing on with I see I see the Cadillac truck coming up Magnolia, you hear me? So he coming up Magnolia and he hit Willow I and mean, he hit the long driveway. Everybody from the project know the long drive, the longest driveway in the project. So he come up the long driveway, you know what I'm saying? I'm standing on Willow, so he pulled the Cadillac truck in front of I jump in. I'm like, bitch, what's happening? He like, see what's happening? You call me wrong, hey, but you must got something for me for real. Like man, pull off, man. You know what I'm saying? We ain't about to sit right here. So you know he had pulled off and stuff, bro. And uh, I'm like, baby, what you got to smoke? I see some uh, keep moving right there. You know back then, you know we smoke keep moving. You know what I'm saying? Like Slim see, I, I, I smoke keep moving. I can't stand. I feel it, blow. So you know I rolled up a guard stuff while we riding uh, some dodo and shit. And uh, I'm like, you know, talking to him and all that. You know, Slim was the actual person that got me started smoking these them. Yeah. Slim actually got me smoking these camera, bro. Cause I got in the truck one day and uh I pulled out a pack of cool. Slim like, man, ain't no way, you understand, man. You just jumped in my leg, ain't with no damn cool in your pocket, bro. We ain't even rocking like that. I'm like, bro, damn, bro, these the cigarette that I smoke. Slim snagged my pack of cigarette, threw it out the window, gave me a pack of hump. I said, man, them motherfuckers, they're too strong, bro. But, uh, long story short, you know. So he driving, and so I looked at him right like, here. I'm hitting the blunt. I'm hitting the blunt. So I looked at him. So as I'm looking at him, I creeped in my pocket. I'm like, man, you know what I'm saying? Bitch, that's what I call you for. I pulled the Rolex out of my pocket. Man, that man pulled that truck over so fast, bro. I mean, Paul, bro. He like, he did this here in the truck like this here. Man, you understand me, man? I know you ain't, uh, man, my little, man, 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 my little one got my wife. You understand me? I done put an APB out there on, on the wife in the mouth of Cali. Yo, Josephine, I went everywhere. Nigga, I ain't even stopped at pawn shops and stuff. So I'm like, man, you know I got you, man. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, boy, y'all can't wait. I'm about to call everybody. Jumping on the phone, calling everybody and getting a rule like, he like, bitch, this thing here called like 200 and something thousand, bitch, you just don't know. I thought a nigga pawned my stuff, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, I had to fuck with you for a few days, you hear me? So, I actually gave him a rule like that back, because that's my dog, you know what I'm saying? When you respect somebody, bro, you got love for him, bro, you don't cut through them, you know what I'm saying? So, I gave him a watch, 
man, that was the happy day of his life. When I gave him a watch, baby, bro, and uh, he worried with the me was like, man, when I blow up, bitch, I got you. And you know me, I'm young, I'm like, man, it ain't much about that, bro. You my dog, you hear me? So I gained a lot of respect from Slim for that. Because if it was an average person, bro, and that watch called that much, they probably would have pawned it or sold it for some money. And it wasn't about the money with me, you heard me? It was about the love. So, you know what I'm saying? I get home me a watch back, you know what I'm saying? Slim, you to always come get me. Come get me from my sister out, you know what I'm saying? The day he got killed. Uh, I was just coming home from jail. Matter of fact, you heard my dad probably like a year and a half, almost two years, you know what I'm saying? And uh, that's when my dad called me, bro. And uh, I'm like, bitch, where you at? And I'm like, man, I'm downtown by my sister out here. I'm like, bitch, I'm about to come and get you. And uh, I get ready and stuff, put on my clothes, go take me a shower and stuff, get ready, put on my clothes and stuff, man. Uh, I go on the other side of the project in the floor of the project because my sister was staying in the night wall at the time. So I go on the other side of the project, give me some smoke and stuff. I got my cutthroat committee sweater on, you know what I'm saying? So I'm waiting for soldier. You know, and uh, my phone rang. My sister like, bro, where you at? I'm like, I'm coming from over the other side of the project getting some smoke. Why, what's up? She like, uh, you know they talking about Slim just got killed on the radio? I'm like, Slim just got killed, man. That ain't, ain't no way. I just talked to Slim. He said, you about to come get me. It's like, man, they saying Slim just got killed in the front of my mouth that he bought her and Gentilly. He laying on the ground right now. I'm like, for real? So I hung up with her. Grabbed my phone. You know, I got my phone already. I hung up. So I'm calling the Slim phone. They going to voicemail. Yeah, the voicemail on the phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the slump, you know what I'm saying? Just leave a voice message. I still remember that message, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, my dude I ain't answering it uh his phone, bro. Go on the voice man. I'm saying it to myself, you hear me? And I'm walking, I got my sack of grass in my hand with my seagull. So now I'm like, man, it got to be true. So my uncle had called me like, Johnny Boo, where you at? I'm like, man, I'm downtown by uh, my sister. What's up? He like, man, you know, uh, I'm in front of the Slim Mama out right now. You know, he laying on the grave. I said, bro, for real? He like, yeah, he laying on the grave right now. He the siren in the background from all my phone, so I know it was true, you hear me? So I'm like, man. So Soldier Son was actually on the way to pick you up when you got the news that he passed. Right, you were pulled to come and get me because, you know, I was, like I said, I was just coming home from prison, you know what I'm saying? I had went on the run for a chose, man. I went on the run for like six months before they called me. You know what I'm saying? So they did call me. They leave me down for like a year and a half, almost two years. So when I come home, you know what I'm saying, he would come and get me. He kind of got me like two, three times. But this particular day, is the day he got killed. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, I'm waiting on dirty. You know what I'm saying? So they, you know, it's no secret, you know, Soldier Slim, Magnolia Slim. You know, he pretty much he wasn't he wasn't your average rapper. You know what I'm right. saying? He was really in the streets, right? As well as you know, a great a great rapper as well. And um, he had a, he had a song that was called "If It's Beef." He had a verse on that song. Now a lot of people say from that verse is what was. The trickle effect to his to his untimely demise. The, like, can you speak on that? I mean, I'ma just say that when it come to that verse on that song, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, everybody knew Slim. He was a lie by himself. You heard me? He was street. He was from the hood, bro. You know what I'm saying? So Slim did what he did. You heard me? And he couldn't take that back. But when you put somebody on a song. And you actually speak about what you did them. You know what I'm saying? That kind of add flame to the fire. So now, that person probably like, man, they can put me on the song. Everybody know what happened. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what come behind that, man. You know what I'm saying? So when, when he, so when you got the news that he got killed, you know, how, like, how did it make you feel? Knowing that he was supposed to come pick you up. You knowing that he was, you know, this... Well respected guy with the project, knowing that he was on his way with musically, like how did that make you feel? Like when you, like when it settled in. I 
I was devastated, man. You know what I'm saying? I was, I was hurt, bro, because you know, you know, so that was young at the time himself. You know what I'm saying? 26 years old. You know, the dude got a, uh, he got a, a major deal coming across. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it was a few times where I would ride with him in the truck where he was talking to uh, 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 Jay the Kiss. You know what I'm saying? He he was he was in cahoots with Jay the Kiss at the time. You know what I'm saying? Dude was in a relationship, you know what I'm saying, with a famous singer at the time, which everybody knew who that was, Mason Gray. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, yeah, he, he was in a relationship with Mason Gray at the time. He had Mason Gray in the project? I had Oh, had okay. In the project. <laughs> and then, you know, when he go out of town in Los Angeles or something, you know, that was his, that was his little female, you know what I'm saying, that he was dealing with in uh, you know, that was my first time actually knowing about 50 Cent then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nigga knew about 50 because Slim side him out on the uh, song. You know what I'm saying? One side for 50 Cent, two balls back to the street. So, you know, we used to be in contact with 50 Cent. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Soldier was supposed to be signed with G Unit, but up on the cut through committee records up on their own label. You know what I'm saying? But unfortunately, you know, due to tragedy and the light man cut so that deal never happened, you know what I'm saying? That would uh 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 Love Me or Love Me Not. That was his last uh, video that he shot. When he shot that video two weeks later after that then he got killed, you know what I'm saying? Mm, what, what was that like? was the video for the make him go you know, up there, you feel me? So what was like the atmosphere and the pride like was it like was that like one of the one of the deaths that the whole the whole Magnolia felt like a like a different type of level of like you know everybody feeling that it was like like a different like because you know unfortunately you know murder in, in, in that environment is you know is common unfortunately but sometimes you get like a Magnolia slum is it like does does that hit differently in the pro like was it different in the project or was it like you know we just you know. It, you know, we got to, like, life goes on type of thing, or, or did it take some time for everybody to, like, kind of get over that? It took some time for everybody to get over it, bro, because the simple fact that, you know what I'm saying, Slump was actually from the Magnolia, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's somebody you see every day, you know what I'm saying? We ain't just look at him as no rapper, he was like me or you. So when you build a relationship with somebody like that, man, you know, in the famous at the same time, it, it, it kind of hit different. You know what I'm saying? Like, when Slim died, Paul and the Magnolia died. You know what I'm saying? Like, when they two them break down, they two everybody Paul. You know? And uh, I remember Slim used to say, man, I ain't letting them demise the project. If I got to buy these motherfuckers, that, that, that what it is. I'm going to buy these bricks and let everybody live rent free. That way it goes. That way it plan to do. You know what I'm saying? But, that ain't happening. So, at the time, so you so you lose like a father figure in Dooney. You lose like a real good friend and, and, and Magnolia Slim. Like, how do you cope with it within yourself? Losing like these two these two people at the time, probably some more in between, but just just these two major figures in, in your life. Like, how did how did you cope with it? I mean, I cope. I mean, like I said, you know, we only suffer pain for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Because you gotta understand, life still go on, you hear me? But what you do here, doing a situation like that, you think about, you know, the game that these guys gave you. You know what I'm saying? The, the conversation y'all talked about. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the long ride that y'all done took. And just, you know, been in each other present, you feel me? So, I always took it as, like, you know, it hurt it. But I had my own life to live afterwards. So, you know, it life after that. You know what I'm saying? So I got to move on, but I got to be better. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got to be better. I'm going to take up the game. Doing it told me and showed me. I'm going to take up the game. Slim showed me and told me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to make them proud. You feel me? I'm going to make them proud. So I'm going to live my life to the fullest, you know what I'm saying, and try to make a better and wiser decision that they probably ain't did, you know what I'm saying, so when I think about Slim and doing it to this day, 
the thing that I got going on in my life and where I actually come from, bro, you know, they look me down smiling on me, you hear me? Because I ain't fail them. So what I'm saying, I ain't fail them, bro. You know, did them guys want a better life? I think they did. But that's just the streets, you hear me? So being one of the ones that survived, bro, and I'm, I'm about to be 39, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like an older cat now, you feel me? I get some young, they call me old time, OG. You know, when I was young, I always wanted to be looked at as an OG or something like that, but now, you know, the thing that you done been through, man, you know what I'm saying? You know, I ain't looking stand on the corner and take a group of young people and just tell my story to them. And hoping not to change somebody's life, but change the decision that they won't make, you know, that I ain't made, you know what I'm saying, that I used to make and, and make them think different. But at the end of the day, people still going to do what they want to do. But out of 100 young guy, I might have changed two of their minds. For sure, no, nah, for sure. So speaking of the game, Dooney showed you in the game. Slim showed you. Like, what was, what was the, like the two? Like, what was some of the things that each each person showed you? Like coming up. The one that always told me the game about drugs. You know what I'm saying? How to weigh this, how to weigh that, how to do this, how to do that, how to make it right. If it ain't right, how to break it down and make it right. See what I'm saying? Slim always gave you the game, man. Like, you know, Slim game was kind of different from doing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, Slim wanted better for us. He wanted to take us out the hood, show us a different light. You know what I'm saying? But, like I said, Slim game was always different, man. You know, it was kind of like a twist to it. You know what I'm saying? You just had to catch on to it. But what he wanted to tell you? Because as each individual, he taught us something different between within us. He might told us all the might something different. He might told Timmy something different. So be stupid something different. Probably saw something different than me. You know what I'm saying? So he gave us game individually different. But my game from Slim that he told me, bro, was always with the move forward, man. Make sure you make wide decisions. You know what I'm saying? Uh think before you do things sometimes, you know. And just live the best life that you can. You know what I'm saying? I mean, ain't no turning back. You in the game, so accept whatever come with it. And that's just what it is. You know, accept it. Right. Man up to it, you know. You, you know, jumped off the post. So when you do something, bro, face the consequences. You know, another thing. Uh, for sure, for sure. So, you know, so, all right, so, boom. Now, you know, Dooney, Dooney gone, you know, Slim gone. Where, where are like the DBs now? As in, like, right after that, are y'all still, you know, are y'all still heavy? As in, you know, just in the streets, or like, are y'all doing your own thing at this point? I mean, everybody grown now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm gonna see a lot of Family Guy. Nah, you know what I'm saying? Nah, this, nah, this is like right after, I'm saying like like Slim got killed. Oh, yeah, we still, yeah, Slim yeah right, right after Slim got killed. Like, well, you know, some of us were still heavy in the street. You know what I'm saying? We still were doing our thing. That's how they made a mark for, you know what I'm saying, the trademark, the brand that doing it, boy. You know what I'm saying? They, they, we kept it going. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, man, like after doing it got killed, I still was out there. I still was doing my thing. I still was in the project. I'm looking for answers. I'm still on the air. I'm still by the park. I'm out here. You know what I'm saying? Who had the best who had the best hands in the Dooney boys? Fighting wise, if y'all was just all square up with one another. I mean all oh, me and me and all my brother had fights with each other, you know what I'm saying? All the men tangle man, you know what I'm saying, grabbing each other, swinging around like, nigga, you can't have you know how it is in the hood, man, you know what I'm saying, but 
all of that had, man, you know what I'm saying? We always knew how to fight, because growing up in the project, he better know how to fight. You know what I'm saying? But uh, Timmy had some hands. Timmy had some hands, man. You know what I'm saying? I got to give it up to Pasquale, man. You know what I'm saying? That, that was his, uh, that was one of his names that, you know, that was in the project, too. Like, uh, on that Knock My Dog song, Slim and Jeezy, man. Like, nigga, knock my dog, nigga, knock my dog. And Slim said at the end of the first verse, whoever killed Squally, that way we gonna send a hit at. That was Timmy. You know what I'm saying? So, Timmy had some nice little hand, bro. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let me see, let doing the boy Kelman had some hands. Uh, stupid. He'll fight. But stupid gonna shoot you. I'm just put it like that. He ain't on. He ain't on. He ain't with all that. Stupid no one thing, and that's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? That name speak for itself. You know what I'm saying? Care will fight. Show the mic a fight. I fight. But it, when it came up to me fighting, bro, I was trying to like. I was always older, so you know if I could prevent something with me and my doing it, boy, I'm gonna try to. That we came there, we gonna go there then. What's up? You know what I'm saying? Me and Sergeant Mike not had a fight before. You know what I'm saying? Actually, him and his brother tried to jump me before. You know what I'm saying? But that ain't work out. You know what I'm saying? So. What, what, uh, so, what happened with that situation? I mean, we were going to a sword and slim concert one night, and uh, I'm talking about we on them eight pills, man. Heavy, you hear me? I done popped about two and a half of them, man. You hear me? So, everybody on pill. So we pull up by uh, Church of Chicken on uh, Claiborne Avenue by the Legas station and get some cigars before we go on Galva Street and go get some uh, some endo, you know what I'm saying? Some of that dro. So let me see, dro it is, you hear me? So uh, I'm in a rental car, I'm in a white grand now. So uh, they had like an older woman behind me. We already done let show the mic out the car to go in the store and get the go. It really ain't no parking spot, really. So I'm, you know, man, me, man, respectable, you know, respectable. I'm pulling out trying to let the old lady in and get in the spot. Because when he come out the store, we, we about to take off, you hear me? So I'm pulling out the spot and pulling up a little way for him. He coming to the to the car. Man, boo, bro, you trying to leave me? And I'm like, bro, I ain't trying to leave you. I'm letting the old woman in, bro, what's up? So he made nothing out of something. You hear me? So I'm like, bro, you tripping, bro. The real, bro, you on the fucking pill, bro. You tripping. So, you know, we get uh, on Galva Street by the uh, the woman with the gas and shit, you know. And uh, one thing led to another. He get out of the car, put the hand in my face. I'm like, bro, go ahead, bro. I'm telling you, bro. Go ahead on, show the mic, bro. So, you know, he swing on me and shit. I died. I pushed him, then he swing on me again, and we go to fight. Him and his brother try to jump me, you know what I'm saying? I wind up handing both now, nah, but you know, one against two. You know, they got a few licks in, you know what I'm saying? But the other little doing the boy actually like stepped in. Man, y'all tripping, bro, stop, you know. But you know, like, probably two days, we ain't spoke to each other. I'm looking at him, he looking at me then. He finally come and he like laughed, like, bro, we were tripping, bro. I'm like, yeah, bro, we, yeah, we were tripping. So, you know, that same day when he came to me and apologized, you know what I'm saying? We, uh, Go to Mama Taste down on uh, Louisiana Avenue. Mama Taste was a famous chicken uh, place that everybody in the Magnolia to go to. Across from Walgreens by Rallies. We go there and get some chicken and start talking over, bro. We see, we back popping the same day. We throwing back two more pills. So, you know, that was, that was, that was something to remember for us. You know what I'm saying? But, uh. Just like a little, like, right, for right, some brother. Right, right, type. right. Mm -hmm. right. It wasn't nothing, you know. It was like two right don't make no wrong, both double wrong. Right, right, right. You feel me? So, so what? Um, what was your relationship with uh, Lil Tuna? Oh man, Tuna, man, Tuna was a silent one. You hear me? The Tuna wasn't the type that was uh, in a lot of trouble. He kind of was like one of the young, smart Tuna boys. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he, he just was a straight hustler. Straight up. Tuna was a straight hustler. And he'll get down if it come down, but he the type that, you know, he'll try to prevent it first. 
before it get that far. You a good little dude, man. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you like to mess with the little young women and stuff, you know, his age and stuff. And I think that what really got him uh, knocked off, bro, out of hate. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga see a young fly nigga with a little money for dressing fly and shit. You know, they, you know how them young niggas there, they feel like they ain't getting the recognition that he getting, so I feel like that's how they ended up with Tuna, you know, hatred, bro. Like, we all had our own hate. You know what I'm saying? Somebody hated me, somebody hated him, somebody hated him, he ain't like him. You know so, where, so where were you when you got that call about, about Tuna? Uh, when I got that call about Tuna, man, I would, uh, I think I would cross the river at the time. Man, I think I would cross the river at the time when I got the call about Tuna. He was at, uh, this little, uh, teen club that was on Tulane Avenue, you know what I'm saying? And that what happened to him over there, by the side of him in the back of his head, you know. But, uh, Tuna was a silent little... <laughs> That young cat, man, you know what I'm saying? We real sad, man. For sure, okay, so, uh, you know, so right after that, right after a couple years, um, you know, Slim, Slim died in 2003, you know, 2005, Katrina hit. Right. Where, where did you go, where, where, like, were you still in the city when Katrina hit, or were you able to evacuate? Yeah, when Katrina hit, I stayed over in the city. I was staying right off of Delacy by uh Devon, by Devon High School, you know what I'm saying? Uh, me and my baby mama Tamara, which is Timmy's sister, we were staying together in the one bedroom apartment, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that's why I was staying there when Katrina hit, so you know how certain people from, I mean, the people from the city, like, we like, man, that hurricane ain't coming, man. We ain't worrying about that, man. We gonna ride it out. Man, it ain't starting that, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, we made a decision to stay. Oh yeah, so okay, see, so yeah, I stayed, yeah, but like, what, at what point did y'all like realize that you know this shit kind of real? I mean, really and truly, man, I think uh, they really just did something to the levee, blew it or whatever, bro. Cause uh, when the storm passed, man, we were actually on the porch. It stormed, it, bro. It went up with some hard wind and a lot of hard rain coming down. I can power line down just because the strong winds and stuff, and you know, like that. But uh, that night, that storm passed, man. It was good. We wait for it in the morning, you know what I'm saying? So uh, when we wake up in the morning, I step up out of the bed, all I put my feet on the ground, and sh sh just hear water. Man, they got water in there out. So during the time, you know what I'm saying, the neighbors that were around were knocking on the door. Like, y'all come up out there, get, get them churned out, that water coming up. We like, man, man, the hell. We just went to sleep, it was straight. We outside smoking, you know, weed, smoking cigarettes, drinking. Next morning, where all the water come from? You know, some people that were bagged up by the devil in the night ball, you know what I'm saying, across the canal, were saying they heard loud explosion, like boom, 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 boom. Like, if, you know what I'm saying, the heads in the cold, cold. That was hit the cope in there with uh, blowing the levee up, you know what I'm saying? And release pressure off the levee to flood the city out because too much was going on. Me, that's what I think they did, you know what I'm saying? Too much was going on, so they really flood the black communities out, you know what I'm saying? To force them out, out the city. And that was another way for them to uh, say, well, you know, we're going to find a demolity project. You know what I'm saying? Because so you, I remember you saying, um, Speaking of the you know demolishing the projects, it was it was already kind of in, in, in place though. Cause, right, right, yeah. right. It was kind of already in place. Cause they just was were moving people out, mm -hmm. but they actually ain't demolished them yet until Hurricane Katrina hit. Mm -hmm. I think that was their way because they just really ain't made a decision on it yet. I mean, who know? They probably were gonna uh, uh, fix them up. You know what I'm saying? To do something, they just wanted us out. But when Hurricane Katrina came, I guess they just made a decision on go ahead on and start the demolition and just get rid of the project. Because if we get rid of the project, then we feel like the murder ring gonna go down because this is where all the crime happening at in these projects. Right. So Magnolia, Cali, you the Melfamine, you know what I'm saying? And the Desire, the Florida. 
You had the Fisher Project with Megan uh, Illinois. You know what I'm saying? You had the Ville. You had the Lafitte. So, you know what I'm saying? If we get rid of these projects, then we're going to slow the crime rate down. But actually, what they did was they just made it worse. Because when uh, they got everything established a little bit, to where people could come back home and stuff, man, that did nothing but boost the crime rate back up, man. Because now we mad. We can't go back to our projects. Where we going to go at? You know, the few houses that, you know, running up and established where we could go in. So, you know, that's just how they happen, man. So a lot of people from New Orleans, you know, they, they went to other cities. Like, yeah, like, like Houston city. and Atlanta. Right. Or they went, you know, Baton Rouge or whatever. Right, right. They say when New Orleans came to these cities, it, the crime rate went up. You know, New Orleans came. New Orleans came, basically. I mean, anywhere people from New Orleans go at, you know what I'm saying? We just gonna be and respect our mind, regardless of what they got going on. We gonna respect niggas from the city. I don't care where we go at. We gonna stomp and we gonna make our present known. You know what I'm saying? That's just what it is. Atlanta felt the pain. Houston felt the pain. Dallas felt the pain. Mobile, you know what I'm saying? Just everywhere they, people from New Orleans went, bro. They, they knew that, you know what? Jackson, Mississippi, they felt the pain. So people like, you know, well, we gonna have to let these guys in, bro, because they ain't going. Like we either gonna live in this thing or we just gonna kill every day. Which one we gonna do? You know what I'm saying? Y'all gonna accept us or what? If y'all ain't gonna accept, we're gonna make y'all accept, but then that way happened. We actually made them accept the fact that you know, New Orleans Indians were here to stay. And y'all gonna respect us while we here. Right, so, you know, being, let's say, you know, relocated, and then you go back to New Orleans, and, you know, it's just a completely different look. How did, you know, how did that make you feel knowing that everything that you knew, you grew up, everything is just gone? Like, what was the new look? And then, you know, was it, like, different now? Was it, like, different hoods and mixing with, you know, in the same places now? And as far as, you know, when you go back? Or, like, how was that? I mean, it was more definitely mixed people, you know, everywhere. Because, you know, it was little out and available for everybody. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, everybody just had to basically, like, try to get along. You know what I'm saying? Uptown might add more out than downtown because when you think about it, downtown was considered across the canal, the ninth wall area, seventh wall, eighth wall. So when these levered breached it, they broke down there in the ninth in the ninth wall area. So that part of the city man had like twelve, thirteen foot of water. You can't even see the roof on houses, man. You know what I'm saying? So uptown got some water, but it wasn't no twelve or thirteen feet. You know what I'm saying? Probably five, six feet, seven feet, but, you know, I mean, we just had to get along, make it do what it is, because you got to look at a lot of law people, man. So we're trying to rehabilitate our life, too, at the same time and rebuild. You know, you got these jobs not started back. You know, Bourbon Street now opened up. One of the first business districts that opened up beside the uh, Central Business District, CBD, everybody, my St. Charles. So, you know, now jobs starting to come available back. So people coming back for work, I was one of them. Okay. You know, I was selfing there at the time. My job was trying to play me out with the money. You know, I was getting paid nice guap and change every week, like twelve, $1,200 a week. And uh, she decided to lose one of her restaurants, you know what I'm saying, and uh, downgrade back to the Bourbon Street French Quarter area. And... Uh, by that being a high tourist area, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm cooking more. You feel what I'm saying? I'm cooking more food because, man, you got the Essence Festival come, bro. You got all type of things that go on, you know what I'm saying? In the French Quarter, bro. And uh, basically on the weekend, you got a lot of crowd tourists that be coming now. You know how to sit there with different events coming, so it's more or not. So I'm like, you know, the only way I can still cook it, you know, you could drop my pay from the other restaurant. I understand you ain't going to have that restaurant no more. So I can't get paid for that. We ain't gone. I'm going to move on from that. So uh, she ain't agreed to still pay me $600 for one restaurant every week. You know what I'm saying? 
and she was trying to put me back on the time. I was on the set salary at the time, so my pay was six hundred dollars for both of these restaurants every week. So that doubled the pay. I worked Batang Street area uh six hundred. I worked Bourbon Street area six hundred. That's twelve hundred a week. I'm getting paid guaranteed. You know what I'm saying? So when she lost the Batang Street area, go back to the French Quarter, she didn't want to pay six hundred. Now she want me on the clock. I'm your chef. I cook all your food, so I made mean, so your restaurant got food. You're not gonna do that. You're not gonna downgrade me like that and put me on the time because we ain't getting that much an hour. So I'm, I'm I'm cooking all this food for you. I might go home with a hundred, two hundred, something out of check. I got a family to feed. I got children. I got bills. Ain't no way I can live off of that. So you know what? I got to go. <laughs> I'm a street dude. So I know how to survive in the street at the same time, you hear me? So if I got to go back to what I know, to make sure Bill paid and my family and my kid got what they need, that's what it is, and that's what I did. And once I did that... So that, that ultimately brought you back to the streets, basically? Right, right. Okay. So once I did that, man, and made that uh, decision to do what I wanted to do at that time, bro, that what made me go back in the street. And once I went back in the street, bro, you know, I was a high head myself, man, you know what I'm saying? All type of other stuff started to come about and, you know, and that's just what it was. You know, I wasn't going. You know, like like I see, I, I move in silence, you hear me? I right. did things the small way. What I did, you never know. You know what I'm saying? Unless I told you. Right, so what, like, what did you uh, ultimately get locked up for? What, what were your charges? Uh, my... I told uh, two counts of on, on robbery, uh, uh, I mean, one count of on robbery, two counts of kidnapping. And uh, I was facing three life sentences plus 25 years in the state of Mississippi. You know what I'm saying? And uh, So what happened, like, with that whole situation? I went to robbing and kidnapping, bro. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I had to get it. You either get down or you're going to lay down. I'm coming to get it. I heard you was a dope boy. I heard you got some money in your house. You got some drugs in your house. I'm coming get it. Point blank period. And that would lead me to prison. Once I left New Orleans, and I'm like, you know what? I'm about to go to different states and try this. You heard me? They could tell me that I heard that this one got it, that one got it. You just gonna go at it. When I made the Mississippi, man, that was my last stop. You heard me? The cracker wasn't gone. You heard me? So, you know, uh, I ain't gave him no high speed chasing nothing. You heard me? Uh, I was identified, actually, I was identified by a person that, you know, I done laid down. And uh, I ain't care at the time. No mask, no nothing. You know, I ain't care. I was in, 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 I was in the mind frame, like, you know, effing. You hear me? So I ain't care. So I was identified, bro. And uh, I ain't laid them on the live speed tape. But uh, I know that the, the white folk, man, if I don't stop in the area, the way a lot of people ain't no telling what they gonna do to me. So I pulled over in the McDonald's uh, parking lot. They snapped me out the car, got done to my ear, 15, all that old stuff. And they brought me to the county jail. I was investigated for 72 hours, you know what I'm saying? They couldn't get nothing from me. You know, I was telling them, fuck them, and all this here. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Y'all asking me questions, y'all pulled the know already. Bring me back to myself, man. I don't want to talk. I'm tired. But you might got some cigarettes for me. You know what I'm saying? So they like, oh, you a little small one. I'm like, man, listen, bro. So I go back to my little cell, bro, and all that, you know. They held me in the county jail for like a year. After my year, I go to court. Bam, I go to court. Guy about, you know what I'm saying? To the 15. And like I said, instead of 15, I wind up doing 13 because the law changed. So now I'm home right now today, sitting in front of the camera with you. So you know what I'm saying? This is an epic moment, you heard me? I mean, see, it's freedom, bro. I've been living good, eating good, you can see. I'm, I'm, I'm at a weight that they probably ain't never saw me. So I'm, I'm living good, man. I'm comfortable, you know what I'm saying? I got trying to give me three life sentence plus 25 years and by me kind of new. The system a little bit, the law a little bit, you know what I'm saying? To my knowledge. Uh, I had a lawyer, and uh, and I was breaking down on my lawyer like, look, man, I can't, I ain't about to lay down to no three life sentence plus no twenty five years, bro. 
with the better offer that you could give me. You know what I'm saying? I need you to go up there to the district attorney and y'all need to talk and see what it is. You heard me? And then uh, he went up there and he come back. He like, man, I got good news. He like, man, you take this child, then the other child is going to be thrown away. I said, what child did I have to take? And how much time? I don't mind doing that because I knew I was in the wrong. I'm going to set my wrong, you heard me? That man in the state of Mississippi, man, he redneck, man. No, they, they live for hanging you. They live for throwing you away for life sentences and stuff. So I got to play the game they're playing, you hear me? I got to beat them at their own game, you hear me? I got to be smart. So y'all want to ball? I ain't going to take y'all to try, but I'm going to take y'all to try. I'm going to lose. And if I lose, I got three life sentences plus 25 years. Like I said, hey, what you got on the table for me? Go up there, I'll let the district attorney and the DA. You know, that is the DA. So we go up there, he like, uh, best thing I got, man, is uh, come out to the home robber tour. And uh, we're uh, MP, the two kidnapping tour. Nine process and MP, that what it mean. So I'm like, man, what that day for day or that just 15 years, you know what I'm saying, with time cut. Like that day for day. So I'm looking like, man, this man, I ain't about to play with these crackers out here, man. You know what I'm saying? Three life sentence, 25 years, take it to tribe, I lose, I get that. But if I cob out and they now process the other two children, I could take 15 years. 15 years, I could do that. So I told my law, you know what, go back up there and tell them, come on with the paperwork. I take them 15 years. You know what I'm saying? So my law was like, look. Mr. Bailey, uh, just lay low, stay away from the cell phone in prison, and you know the 15 years going to go by fast, he said, but the law going to change. I don't know when, but they keep throwing it on the table every year, July 1st, that they, they you know, it, it going to change, so I've been sitting in that 13 years man, waiting on the law to change, you know what I'm saying? So. Actually, July 1st, 2001, I get that blessing I was waiting for. It ain't just changed for me, it changed for the whole system. And I fared up under the new law. The way, you know what I'm saying? Person that served 10 or more years, eligible for parole. I ain't had a parole day. I still put it being incarcerated right now, the 2024, July. So in that law chain, it threw me a parole day automatically. My parole day was July 1st. So I, case manager called me up there. I go to her office and, you know, stuff like that. And she, like, got some good news. I see my time sheet. Remind my time sheet. I ain't had no data on that at first. It just had a flat time date, 2024. So when she showed me the time sheet about parole, yeah, the date July 1st, 2021. I'm like, man, ain't no way, man. It happened for real, man. I'm getting the best that I'm, you know, that I've been looking for. And, uh, you know, my fiance, she always tell me, like, be out with me, like that, you know, you're going to get out. Before then, I just feel that you're going to get out, like something's going to happen. And so I called uh, my wife phone. My, I had a cell phone the whole time. I was in prison. You know I'm saying like, hey, I got the network. I ain't about to be using no wall phone, so I was networking the whole time. So, K Manager called me to her office, bro, and she showed me the parole date, and I signed some papers and stuff for uh, eligibility uh, address and shit like that. So, I gave my address, and she submitted it back to uh, Mississippi Department of Correction, and they answered back, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I submitted my address, and they brought it. You know, they came back with my date, like, you know, December 14th. He free December 14th, so I'm like, man, this for real, for real. I told him he was coming home in 2021. Right, so, you know, I came, the law changed in 2021, and I was able to make it home right before Christmas, mm -hmm. December 2014. So I was home, you know what I'm saying? I mean, being in the Department of Mississippi Correctional, bro, I was, I went down with 24. Young, why I was 24 years old. I remind when I went to prison, I was part of the blood gang already from dealing with them guys from across the river. You know what 
what I'm saying? And uh, so by me going to prison out there and I presenting myself as, you know, I'm a blood. I represent Su Wu. You know, it be so. I mean, I was respected. You know what I'm saying? But, so, like, while you was down, you did 13 years. Like, who are some of the people that you know that held you down throughout the years? I mean, you know, like I said, my mama came on 2010, you know what I'm saying? When you ain't got nobody, man, you got your mama. Your mama gonna always be there when you ain't got nobody. Basically, bro, my mom and my sister, you heard me? I mean, doing the boy Rob, he held me down to the fullest, whatever. I'm sorry, I pick up the phone and call him. Hey, man, I need this. It was never no hesitation, bro. He always showed me love. Like, if he couldn't do it today, he gonna do it tomorrow. If he couldn't do it tomorrow, he gonna do it the next day. So doing the boy arrive held me down, man, my whole time, bro. You know, he had some run in with the law where he went there time in the feed. You know what I'm saying? We come home and always that call away. He always connect back with me. You know what I'm saying? So he held me down my whole time while I was incarcerated. Like I said, my sister, my mama, but fall dead. Anybody out the hood, bro? Ain't nobody out the hood held me down, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I reached out to Skip, Skip Boo when he came home. You know what I'm saying? Brought some me uh, a couple of his books that he had me. You know what I'm saying? And you know, he was just coming home. I ain't want to be a burden on him, and I know he just coming home. You know what I'm saying? Send me some books, bro. I need something to read. So he sent me some books, and I read them, bro. Send me some pictures and stuff and all that, but... Other than that, man, you know, I, I, I held myself now, really, you know what I'm saying? I, I was hustling. I got a phone, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm a hustler. I made a way. You know, I ain't had to call home and really ask nobody for nothing. I made my own money. So, like, did you did you feel at any point, did you feel forgotten, by, by, you know, by, by where you was raised at times? Like, did you feel like, you know, you got your time and... Like nobody reaching out or, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna say I ain't never felt forgotten. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, you know, people have their life to live too. You gotta always keep that in mind that people living their life out there. You know what I'm saying? So, there's other things that going on besides me in prison. They know one thing, I'm safe. I'm all right. So. So Logger Black, what role did Logger Black play in your life? Because you know we see we see you on that C Murder <laughs> right, right, right. Project uh, DVD. Right. You in there with Logger Black, Be Stupid, Trey Nitty. Right. Uh, it's a it's a few of y'all. Mm-hmm. And we're gonna get to the other names as well. But you know, tell me you know your relationship with Logger Black. I mean Logger man. It just go on and on when it come to love, bro. He just a comedian, man. You know what I'm saying? But he was a real dude. You feel me? Like, we had a, a relationship, bro, that nobody would understand. Like, he always was real. You know, when I come around, he rip me sometimes. Johnny Boo Boy, you got on them songs, John Gene, the motherfucker look like a bag of on the fur. You know, like, stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Boy, you got on them big-ass Timberlands. And, you know, stuff like that, uh. Boy, you got on that big ass t shirt. Fuck you, think you had a juvenile concert? You know, long all the way with Logger, man. He was the comedian of the project. He don't give up how much a relationship he got with he gonna rip you. That's just Logger Black. So, you know, it, 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 it was fun being around Logger, man. You know, you just, you can look at Chicken and laugh. You know, that was his name, Chicken. So, you can look at Logger and laugh, man. Just, he ain't even got to be funny. You could just look at him and laugh. He see you laughing. Don't let him see you laugh because he about to get up on you. He ain't care who you were, what kind of status you, you had or nothing. That's just longer, man. So that's the relationship man Logger had. You know what I'm saying? It always was fun being around Logger, man. You smoked out with a little weed or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It always was fun being around Logger, man. He was the Magnolia comedian. You know what I'm saying? Your day gone bad, bro. I promise you. You come around Logger. You want to think about nothing that you just went through. You could have just killed somebody. You come around law, he gonna make you laugh. You ain't gonna even be thinking about it no more. That's just how the type of person he would. You know what I'm saying? Free law of black man. I always hear 
Magnolia Slim, Lager Black, Double Crosser. What was your relationship with Double Crosser? Me and Double Crosser were cool, man. You know what I'm saying? Bro, we used to be like, you know, one day he gonna write books and all this here and all that. And he did it, you know what I'm saying? When I got incarcerated, the Double Crosser came out with something called the Island Book. That was his name, you know what I'm saying? He did some books I ain't never had read them do. And uh, I'm still anxious to read them books since I've been home, bro. But uh, when I was in the coast of reading, man, Duck always had inboxing me on Messenger. Uh, we always found a way to link up on Messenger or something like that, you know what I'm saying? He always, he always to tell me, bro, I miss it, bro. I can't wait to come on. Be some be out here, I'm be out here. So, you know, that's one of the persons that I was looking forward to once I got released, man, to see, you know what I'm saying? Man, me and Duck had a good relationship, you know what I'm saying? Never had an argument, never got into it. You know what I'm saying? We were here, you know what I'm saying? But that was a good dude, man. Man, me and Double Cross would go way back, man. You know what I'm saying? When I was a little boy, you know, it was Duck and the cousin Reed always to be hanging together. Like, Double Cross are actually uh, Timmy cousin. You know what I'm saying? That Timmy uncle son, you know what I'm saying? So. They actually were cousins, so, you know, I've been around Duck, say, elementary. Pre-K, kindergarten, first grade, second, third, you know what I'm saying, all that type of stuff. Okay, what was your uh, relationship with, you know, one of, probably one of the most stand-up dudes I met throughout this process, Magnolia Levy? Oh, man, Levy. Shout out, to, shout out to Levy, man. Shout That's out my to guy Levy, right man. there. You know what I'm saying, Levy always with 100. I mean, saying I was young, you know what I'm saying, dude always stayed this show. You know what I'm saying? He always used to walk around the project making little rhymes and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, people don't know, you know what I'm saying? Levy was part of, uh, supposed to be one of the part of the hot boy clique. You know what I'm saying? He like with six or seven men. You know what I'm saying? Levy always was silent, bro. He did his little work and thing and stuff, bro. You know what I'm saying? Just with the hood nigga that was smart, dude. You know what I'm saying? So Levy always was a hundred with me, man. You know, I, I, when he post stuff on uh, Facebook now, I come in here, give me a shout out back or something, but man, leave it. He ain't, bro, that one guy ain't never changed. I don't care how long it's been, how many years done paid. Leave it still the same, man. He never changed. He's just gonna be him. So you know what I'm saying? Leave it real Magnolia player, man. Real Magnolia stand up guy. And okay. him always had a relationship where they were him passing me up, me passing him up when I was out. It always was straight, you know what I'm saying? Never no conflict. For sure. Yeah, shout out to Levy, man. That's yeah, a that real dude right Levy, there. Man. You know, right now, you know, the internet, you know, Gangster Williams is home. Do you remember him back in his younger days? Before he got locked up? Yeah, I remember when I was young, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I mean, do wear the little bands and all that stuff, you know what I'm saying? He was hot. He was original hot boy, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he was turned up, you feel me? I mean, you know, that's about really all I can say about, uh, about bro, yeah. Right, so like, you know, he, 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 he home now. You know, they saying, you know, he said, he admitted to it, that he, he, he came home from, you know, telling on his dead homeboys. How do you, how, how do you feel about that? Like me personally, like I said before, I'm not no street dude. Right. If, if me and you do a crime right now, we leave this building, I'd uh, you can it, and it, you can say it's, it's on me. Hey, say it's on me, so you be free. I ain't tripping. But how do you feel about it, though? I mean, man, that's a hard pill to swallow, man. When you know somebody and I got some clout in the game, you know what I'm saying? From all that time, you know what I'm saying? You never see me, I don't care what it is, man. You know what I'm saying? Never fool, bro, whether it be the dead or the living. You know what I'm saying? That's just something that, you know, you can't do, bro. I'd rather spend a life in the, in the prison cell before I do that. You know what I'm saying? I had, like I said, I had three lights in the plus 25 years, bro. You know what I'm saying? I, I ain't, ain't no way my old, my mind could tell me to snitch. I just went laid down, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. I know one thing, freedom gonna come one day, bro. You know what I'm saying? So. That's a situation, bro, where I ain't gonna really just speak on it too much, you know what I'm saying? Because that ain't my situation. Who say that, you know what I'm saying? 
he was forced to do it, he had to do it or whatever. That's just his situation, you know what I'm saying? And people gonna, from the outside looking in, they might not understand what he did, but he did it for whatever reason he wanted to do. So I'm free, you know what I'm saying? I'm out here. And I'm out to the state, you heard me? So, you know, I mean, that's all I can speak on, bro. Are you are you familiar with any other, the other two uh, original hot boys? You got Mosquito and Sterling. Do you have any early recollection of, of them two? Hey, man, I remember Mosquito when I was little, man. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got too much history with Mosquito because I was young. But Sterling... I got a little history with him, bro, you know what I'm saying? Because he always used to be around in the project, just like Mosquito used to do. But Sterling was always to come around with doing it a lot, you know what I'm saying? Mosquito came around too, but Sterling always was with doing it most of the time when doing it come around. So, you know, you always to see Sterling a lot. And uh, I remember one time, man, Sterling them got busted in the long driveway in the back, you know what I'm saying? They done did some old stuff, man, and doing it come running over there by my auntie Patricia out Pat, God bless the D, uh, Black Pat, you know what I'm saying? And uh, Sterling got caught up with another individual. I ain't gonna say no name, but they got caught up in the back driveway, you feel me? And uh, you know, I had a good relationship with Sterling. Like I said, I was young at the time, man, you know what I'm saying? So it was just, some short because them guys life got cut short, you know what I'm saying? Like Sterling Mosquito, you know what I'm saying? Uh like Harry Maurice, you know all them guys, you know they life was cut short while we were young. So you only can speak on what you do remember from them, you know what I'm saying? But they were some real live dudes, man, but they were some good dudes. You know, they used to give up quarter and dollar, man, and go to the ice cream lid. Go by Mr. Brother, get frozen cups, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's just what they were, you know what I'm saying? They were some, they were some I ain't got, man, growing up. Okay, for sure. So I can't say nothing bad about them, besides what they did. I mean, you know, like I said, you never know what them guys had to do to survive, man. But they did it. So in the, in the, in the, in the prime of the Dooney Boys, who are some of the people in the city that y'all were in tour with? I mean, really, basically, man... We were mostly beefing with niggas from our own section. Like I say, hatred. You know what I'm saying? There was a lot of hatred in the project, bro. You know? I mean, it was hatred toward doing it. The what he did. And taking those young guys and some of them dudes that was around the project that been around. They, I don't know, they didn't want to accept it or respect it, but they, they didn't. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, man, when... Why I hate on the next man for doing something when you could have did the same thing? You just ain't had the mind or you just ain't had the money that he had to do it. You know what I'm saying? It was something easy. So most of our beef were from our own section, like I said. Uh, late in the game, you know what I'm saying? Beef developed from other hoods and stuff, you know what I'm saying? For, you know, them coming try to talk in one of our members or her talking one of these members. And, you know, stuff like that, but, uh, I mean, you know, beef ain't never squalled, man, it died down sometimes, you know what I'm saying, so, as long as you living, man, and, and nigga feel like you out to a nigga, you a talking, you still a talking, so, you know, we beefing with all different type of sections of the, uh, of the city, some niggas out the mouth, some niggas out the yo, I third and get over, motherfucker beef with at the time, you know what I'm saying, like I said, most of beef were from my own section, man. So, okay, so who who were some other names from out the other projects that was kind of ringing at the time? I mean, you had a lot of young cat man that were ringing at the time out the whole project, man. I was a lot of the Cali, you man. You know what I'm saying? So the Cali was known for... Yeah, the Cali, you know, them, them guys put in work, you know what I'm saying? My cousin was a poor boy. You know what I'm saying? Josh and Joe, they were poor boys, you know what I'm saying? My cousin Joe got killed in the Cali, you know what I'm saying? Come up together, man, I'm talking about, they my, they my blood cousin for real, so you know. So what, what was the situation with that as far as, because you know, he was also on that, the DVD yeah, as well. Yeah, he was also on the street from the project right. DVD. Right, so what was, what was that situation about? 
I mean, I won't want to speak on it too much, but uh, it was just some behind the back snake shit, you know what I'm saying? And it really just snuck up on him, bro, and just knocked him out, you know what I'm saying? I still don't know the situation with uh, his brother Josh, though. You know what I'm saying? I ain't really just uh, got into detail with that with nobody, but, you know, they were just young and some wild guy, bro. Like I said, growing up in New Orleans, man, when you do a certain thing, bro, you know, I mean, they come back on, you know what I'm saying? I don't never think that there ain't nobody watching you or you getting away with something. We going to be slick if we think we can, you know what I'm saying? So, stuff just happened, man. Like, I had the strong survive, bro. Like, I'm one of the ones still here to live and tell a story, and that's why I'm here today. Do you have any early memories of the Cash Money Hot Boys in the projects, Turk, Juvenile, maybe BG? I know he's from the 17th, but, you know, he's, you know, he's around Magnolia a lot. Like, do you remember seeing them or, you know, being around them? I mean, I always was around Turk, man. Turk, Turk. <laughs> Shout out to Turk. Turk, we need you here. Tell Turk when he need to be on here next, man. Hey, man, you know what I'm saying? I always was around Turk, man. We need to get Turk one and one, man. And take your train down to uh, his uh, Land Rover, bro. And just drive around the city, you know what I'm saying? Doing dumb shit. And Turk to be like, man, I ain't ride with y'all the boys, man. Y'all, man, y'all ain't too much stuff. That nigga shooting at my truck or my car and all that nigga like, man, shut up, man. In the back seat. Oh, man, take this. Here. You know, that way you want it. But Turk was always all right, man, you know what I'm saying? I got some uh, stories about him, but I ain't gonna speak up on it, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, like, Juve, Juve was like an older head, you know, that you looked up to, stood on for Red by Grandma, you know what I'm saying? All we were around there by Grandma, through a little detail every Sunday, uh, every other Sunday, you know what I'm saying? He just would hang out with my Uncle Lionzo, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Black Zo. That leave it onka, so you know that the hood, that the hood onka. Uh -huh. But that Magnolia leave it onka, you know what I'm saying? But uh you know, Lonzo, he uh used to measure my stepsister Teresa with with Dolores daughter, you know what I'm saying? But uh I Juve always was cool, man. I ain't never had a problem with Juve. Like he always see me speak, what's up little nigga why, you know, I holler at him, we you know, go on about our business. You know what I'm saying? It was like that. For that Jesus, you know, man, him got a lot of history together, you know what I'm saying? I don't even want to link that out there, but few people know, some people don't know, you know what I'm saying? We just going to uh, expose that when he come home, you hear me? I'm going to just say that like that. I reckon him, me and him be on camera, but the, uh, for the one that know that, they, they know, you hear me? I mean, uh, Lil Wayne. I ain't never just had no relationship with Lil Wayne, bro. By him being from the 17, he mind more kind of hard on him. Seemed to let him come roam the city like that. Uh, so I really just can't speak up on Weezy too much like that. You no. Know? But, uh. Okay. But, like, guy. take me to. So take me to the Magnolia, though, like 99, 2000, when Cash Money got the rap game on Smash. Oh, man. I mean, they dropping hit after hit. I know, I know the project was on fire. It was on fire. I mean, nothing that was about. They was on fire, bro. They was on fire. I mean, it was everything. You you wanted to be like the hot boy. You know what I'm saying? You wanted to be like the hot boy. Wearing your big t-shirt, your bows, your, your soldier Reeboks, or your classic. You know what I'm saying? We all know soldier put the soldier Reebok out there. You know what I'm saying? But the hot boy represented just as well as soldier did. Ain't a classic Reebok. So, you know, you got the whole Magnolia, you know what I'm saying? Wearing Soldier Reebok, Classic, Jabot, T-shirt. You got the handkerchief tied around your uh, your, your arm, your neck. You got it tied around your head. Everybody want to be a hot boy, you know what I'm saying? I always wanted to be Jizzle, you know what I'm saying? That's my brother. So, you know what I'm saying? So, I always wanted to be him. That was my hot boy. That was, you know, that's somebody I always looked up to. You heard me? Hey, 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 doing the rap game. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, man, they, were, they had to sit down on fire, man. Especially when Juba dropped that back, that thing up in the uh, Shade Bill Pope. You heard me? Everybody was out there, man. They were hot. I mean, they were hot at the time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Juba did that, got that fire. 
I let a nigga you want that ask a mile. Yeah, I mean, they were, they were on fire. The high. Right now in the bell, my court, we, uh, uh, right now uh, uh, where you shoot basketball, on a basketball court. He dropped that high, come back there. Then he did a few shots on the old side of the project. I mean, they were high, man. It was their era, you know what I'm saying? 99, 2000, you couldn't tell, you couldn't tell a nigga from the Magnolia, nothing. Just the behind it, bro. You know, it was Magnolia this, Magnolia that. We ain't trying to hear nothing. Yeah, for so sure. So they represented us. So they represented our hood, bro. And they just did it, man. But uh, from the cab money era, man, you had Pimp Daddy, you had Miss T, you had UNLV. Shout out to Lil Yacht, man. You know what I'm saying? I run into him all the time. You know what I'm saying? We took a few pics together, but. No shout out to them guys that came first before them. You know, you always think about them, you know what I'm saying? Because without them, it wouldn't be no cash money. You know what I'm saying? No fact. limit. I don't speak on no limit too much. You know what I'm saying? When it come to math for people, you know what I'm saying? They, they, why, why was it that, you know... I turned to the devil when I think about people. Man. I was just behind it, bro. I don't but, like how I do play the game, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's what, what, what your uh, disdain towards P, though? I just don't fuck with it. Okay. Is that like a... I don't even want to listen to music. You know what I'm saying? Cause once you cross one of mine, then you cross me. So once you cross souls, I ain't paid them in money, then I felt like you ain't paid me mine. You know what I'm saying? That's just that. Fuck Cause, cause so C-Murder, we always fucking with C. C a real one, you hear me? So shout out to C-Murder, man. You know what I'm saying? Free C-Murder, bro. You know, never give up. You know what I'm saying? So one day, man, you gonna be out here. You gonna be on podcast and YouTube telling your story. See, so you know, keep your head up, bro. I know you gonna watch the video, so keep your head up. See, murder. You know, uh, I got a few other more shout out. I got my girl Javonda, man. You know what I'm saying? Six coat for sure. You know what I'm saying? See her melt with the lady gift. You know what I'm saying? Go on the uh, website, man, at Javonda Socks. You hear me? And get your lady the uh, old Tate gift. Rest in peace to Lil T, man, with a silent young cat. You know what I'm saying? I want to shout out to Diana. You know what I'm saying? One of the soldier Slim baby mamas. You know what I'm saying? She got a son for Slim. You hear me? He locked up during little time, but he be home. Lil Ziggy low. You know what I'm saying? Free Lil Ziggy. Uh, I want to shout out to St. Mac, man. Uh, Murder Love Mixtape, man. You know what I'm saying? He did that. You know, shouted me out a few times on it. Uh, Stuff, man, and you know that dude, man, holding me down, man, since I've been in prison. You know what I'm saying? I want to give a shout out to the whole Magnolia, man. You know what I'm saying? Basically, you know what I'm saying? Because without y'all, it wouldn't be no me. Shout out to the Cali, you know what I'm saying? I Me, mean, my family, my mom, my sister, nephew, nieces, my children, my fiance, right here. Come here. Say, you just hide back in the cut, you know what I'm saying? It's my baby right here, you hear me? She man holding me down. Come down a little. She man holding me down, man. My time in, in prison, man. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? I got me a real one, you hear me? She ain't hey, and shout out time. to um my hometown, Bruton, Alabama. Shout out to Mobile, the 251, period. Shout out to my daughter, Lexi Williams. My godsons, um, Amarion, Tessarion, Montez, Jay, Jaroski Jr. Shout out to all y'all. Yeah, free hundred con braids. And free hundred con braids. Free hundred con braids, man. man. Y'all already know what it is, man. Bees up, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and that's it. You know, that's my guy, man. I mess with hundred con, man. You know what I'm saying? I hope one day, man, him will be able to sit down and do an interview. Uh, I liked how he did that uh, Soldier Slim flow. You know what I'm saying? When he hooked up with a uh, little Soldier Slim. That's another thing. Shout out to little Soldier Slim, man. He doing the thing. You know what I'm saying? He got a business mind. You know what I'm saying? I feel like he holding it down right now, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the little young dude, he doing his thing, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my brother, B. Jizzle. Y'all already know. Shout out to City Jizzle. General, man. Free you know what I'm saying? The heart of the streets. Let him out there. You know what I'm saying? It's time up. He did what he do. It's time for him to be free. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I just what it is, man. They doing the boy Johnny Boo, man. You know what I'm saying? Coming live with my boy, JB, man. Uh, truth, truth be told, told hip hop. You know I'm saying, fire look. Go look in at the up, man. In the building, man. Go look at my uh Instagram. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know what it is. 
Johnny Boo, man. Follow me.